starting off with a couple of talks um, from the perspective of the charity sector. Our first speaker is Mike Dixon, Assistant Chief Executive of Citizens Advice. Uh, Mike took up his role at Citizens Advice in April 2011, leads on strategy, planning and performance, external and internal communication, including public affairs, government relations and governance. Mike is going to be looking at the provision of advisory services in the 21st century and how to make sure that a 70-year-old business model remains relevant. Over to you, Mike. Um, thank you. Um, could you just put up your hand if you've um, heard of Citizens Advice? So that's everyone. Could you um, put up your hand if you um, have either used our services or you, you sort of are connected to Citizens Advice in some way, so your aunt has volunteered for us or... So that's quite a lot of you sort of slowly remembering different aunts. Um, and then could you, could you put up your hand if you sort of have a bit of a soft spot for Citizens Advice in a way that you can't really justify? <laughs> Yeah, okay. So it's, I, I quite like starting with that because it's, it makes me feel more kind of welcomed and comfortable. Um, but, but also, there's a kind of point behind that, which is... Um, uh, I'll come to you in a second. So what I'm going to talk about, really, is, um, is why Citizens Advice gets that kind of reaction from a crowd like this, um, and sort of that's fairly typical of, of crowds everywhere, um, then I'm going to talk about some of the standard stuff Citizens Advice is doing, some of the less obvious things, and, and partly because you all know far more about IT than I do. I've tried to focus on things that aren't IT, but are business challenges that have quite strong IT implications. And then just something quite quick on how fast you can get that out of the blocks, even if you are a 74-year-old, um, incredibly complex organization. Um, so on the simple mystery thing, um, we are lovely, and people trust us, and loads of people use us. Um, so, um, we've got 12.6 million users of the website, um, we've got about 20% growth year on year, um, and as, could you put up your hand if you've used our website in the last year, and ideally you don't work for Citizens Advice developing the website? <laughs> so, can we, can we have the gentleman here that was closest to, out of 10, um, how would you rate the sophistication of Citizens Advice's advice website um, from sort of zero is just totally useless, and 10 is the slickest thing you've ever seen. And be really honest, please. Really? Yeah. Um, I would say that's, that's the most generous score I've ever heard anyone give it. <laughs> can, can, can someone, can someone who's, who's not afraid to um, offend me um, <laughs> give a slightly more... Yeah. So the gentleman just behind you to the left, what would you rate it as? About five. That's still the most generous. So it was, it was probably cutting edge about 2002, our website. And we've actually had really great people working on it, but have been totally frustrated by having an underlying content management system that is basically sort of, um, uh, uh, sort of Jurassic. Um, and I think that the overall kind of point with us is probably it's about three out of 10 in terms of the sophistication of our digital offer at the moment. Um, and and yet, loads of people love us, loads of people have a soft spot for us. We've got 12.6 million users and 20% growth year on year. So the, the sort of fundamental point I wanted to start with is the thing that Citizens Advice does in terms of offering advice to people about problems they have and offering that in a kind of simple way um, uh, is much, much, much more important than all of the whizzy bits about how you deliver the technology. Um, and, and I think um, it's really worth remembering that as we kind of go forward, that the kind of core thing you're trying to do and thinking that through really, really, really carefully to make sure it's relevant is what matters, and then everything else is important, but nowhere near as important as that. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to do is we've... Um, I'm in a good mood today because we got 54 million quid from government and the big lottery this morning, um, so, which is great. Um, for all of those who love Citizens Advice, it's a great piece of news. Um, uh, and, and towards the end of last year, we also got an investment from our sponsoring department, Biz, um, that's going to help us improve our digital services. And, and I think the, as, as the person kind of leading that, that piece of work, um, there are a few things that I've learned about how to approach a digital project. And I think one of, um, one of the things that I found most useful in, in my role is to try and work out what is the right kind of metaphor to be able to talk about this in a service that hasn't really done this piece of work very, well, sort of very systematically before. 
and a tree is the best one that I've come up with. Um, so what we're trying to do this year, essentially, is put in place, um, you're probably not going to admit to this, has anyone, has anyone grown a bonsai tree ever? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's the same people that have used the Citizens Advice website, but unfortunately, <laughs> um, there is no, basically when you're, when you're growing a, a, a bonsai tree, the important things are is to get the main branches growing in the right direction. And, um, and with sort of other trees in general, you want the whole thing to have the right shape. And if you get a kind of big branch going out in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter what you do after that because the whole thing will unbalance and topple over. And I think for our, our approach to digital, what we're really trying to do is make sure that the kind of initial sprouts on our digital capability are going in the right direction. And then we will work out what the leaves need to look like, how we kind of trim the canopy much later, as long as we've got those kind of fundamental things in place. And this is our kind of best take on what they are. So um, uh, on the, your right, bottom right, about having, this, these are all quite obvious, I think, and quite standard. Um, so content tailored to, tailor to user profile. So um, if you uh, come from Mumsnet to us, then you probably have a certain set of stuff that you want to see. Um, if you um, have used us before and you've used lots of stuff around debt advice and employment advice, you're probably going to want a budget planner that is about redundancy. Um, on flexible digital publishing, I'll come to this a bit later, um, but organizations like us that do both um, uh, content uh, advice and also try and influence policy need a very different model of how you publish information compared to before. Um, having really accessible responsive design is really important to us as, as an organization that deals with lots of people who have difficulty accessing uh, traditional digital services. Um, I'm sure that this came up a lot in the, in the presentation from Gov UK um, about the importance of assisted digital to our, to our service model. Um, so essentially, this is sort of in the past, organizations like Citizens Advice have gone, um, we have a phone channel, we have a digital channel, we have a face-to-face -face channel, essentially, and we have a team of people that design how do you give advice face-to-face, -face, and how do you give advice on the phone, and how do you give advice online. Um, and what that's meant is that um, you tend to have a sort of what I call the million professors model of giving advice, where all of your volunteers and all of your advisors have to know loads of stuff. Um, and that's both very expensive and also quite difficult to do. And what we're trying to move towards is having a much more fundamental underpinning of the advice we give and the processes we do that are done through a digital platform, and then your other platforms are just expressions of that in a slightly different way. And what that gives is that focuses the kind of skills that people need to have much more around um, people skills, understanding the problems that you face, and much less around having to know the intricacies of how universal credit uh, um, uh, marginal benefit deduction calculations are made. Um, and that sounds really, really obvious, and it is, but it's also really fundamental as a shift to lots of organizations, particularly those in the public sector and uh, ones like Citizens Advice. Um, the next three I'll skim through quite quickly. Um, so, uh, like lots of organizations have loads of different departments, um, Citizens Advice has about 370 uh, little charities or big, quite big charities that are part of our network and um, at the moment our, um, uh, our sort of bureau web offer makes a sort of box full of ferrets look really organized. Um, and uh, we, we need something that's a devolved kind of content creation and management so that it's not just one team at the center doing the, doing the content. And then really importantly for us, um, much better social functions. And this is a bit, there's a bit of Twitter here, but there's also the issue of just how we use knowledge inside the organization. So um, at the moment, the basic issue is Bureau in you know, Taunton does something brilliant and amazing, and the only way that a bureau in Blackpool finds out that that was the brilliant, amazing solution to the problem they've been working on for three years is that the, um, Taunton, I'm trying to remember which places I've used as examples, Taunton says um, uh, to us nationally, we've done this amazing thing, and then we work out that Blackpool's done it and get Blackpool to do it. Um, Whereas it would be much easier and simpler if Taunton and Blackpool had an easy way of saying we're both interested in the same things and connecting to each other. And that is a hugely important driver of what we're trying to do digitally. Um, I promise this is the one slide that I'll stay longest on and the rest will be quicker and more interesting. 
Um, uh, really strangely, and this is maybe a, a message for EduServe, you can't buy this off the shelf. Um, and I know absolutely no one that runs a, an organization a bit like ours, so um, delivering advice, trying to coordinate loads of people, that doesn't want these seven things and isn't really pissed off that you can't buy it out of the box. Um, it, it seems like an incredible market failure to me, but anyway. Um, it's sort of not really my business apart from trying to buy it. Um, and then um, there are some underpinnings sort of continuing the tree metaphor um, in a laborious way. Um, there are some things that we need to get right inside citizens' advice that are kind of challenges for us. One is moving to an agile from a kind of waterfall project management approach. Um, the second is... Uh, this is where the metaphor gets really torturous, but the kind of pruning process. So we have, like many organizations, sort of thousands of web pages, um, and moving them all into a new CMS is a really painful experience, um, but pruning them really effectively can be both a kind of good thing to do inside the organization, but is also a really good kind of culture change vehicle for the teams that own those pages to say, we need to understand how to present content in, di in a digital way, more, uh, in a different way. Um, so that was the, that's the sort of obvious stuff that I wanted to, to kind of run through quite quickly. And then I've got um, some less obvious stuff, which is slightly less to do with, um, slightly more about kind of business challenges and, and slightly more philosophical. Um, the first one is about intranets. So at the moment, um, uh, and this, is, this comes back to the kind of how do you connect Taunton with Blackpool, um, at the moment, our intranet and most organizations' intranets effectively uh, aren't very good at sharing information. So um, uh, they go through to a kind of hub of people, and then that hub of people um, get information in, in a different way. So um, the green people are the people you want to talk to. Um, often any message you have is filtered through kind of senior management or other kinds of management or other kind of channels. And that means it's very, very difficult to talk to people. Um, and, and what people are really doing when they're looking at, um, at your intranet, are they really looking at the Daily Mail sidebar of shame because it's much more interesting? Um, could, you, could you just put up your hand if you know what the Daily Mail sidebar of shame is? I, I don't believe the other half of you. Um, so, so just so that you can pretend that you, you haven't heard about it and when you're talking afterwards you can go, oh, that, I'd never heard of that, and I'll go and have a look at it. This is, this is the Daily Mail sidebar of shame, which is um, an utterly, utterly compelling um, uh, sidebar on, their, on the Daily Mail's website that drives a massive proportion of their traffic. So, so the Daily Mail pretends to be a website that is, that is about kind of hard news, and actually it's a, it's, a, it's a sidebar of shame website with a newspaper attached. Um, and and, and the, 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 thing, the thing about this, the thing that's important here is that, um, and this applies to kind of all corporate communications, is that you are not, um, you are competing in your internal corporate communications with the Daily Mail sidebar of shame. And if what you say is less interesting and less captivating than that, people aren't going to read it or look at it unless they're very, very worthy. So you've got to work out a way of making it more engaging and more interesting. And that's really, really important and not understood as much as it should be. Um, so, so as soon as you get to a more personalized kind of social intranet, um, uh, this is your basic model, which is you get to talk directly with all the people in your organization in a more tailored personal way, and they talk to each other in ways that are completely out of your control. Um, both of these things have massive, massive opportunities but are incredibly hard to manage and get right, but they mean that you can compete with that sidebar because you can make it more about them and less about some celebrities in America who might be married to each other that actually, if we think about it, we don't care about at all. Um, but for some reason it's compelling. So that's, uh, and the kind of big challenge that I think no one has really got right yet, or certainly I haven't seen, is how to manage one of these intranets in a way that really results in a lot of kind of business use, and, and to really prune out the functionality that is just kind of cool to ones that people actually really use. Um, so going back to that, the, the technology behind that sidebar is really, really, really simple, but amazingly effective, and it's kind of that challenge. Um, the final thing that I was going to talk about is, an, is sort of another topic entirely, but sort of similarly, I hope, provoking and challenging. 
Um, and that is the difference between these two roles and what the implications are for how digital services have to be. So 10, 15 years ago, these were two different things. So you had a policy expert who did all the research and all that kind of stuff, and you had a specialist journalist that wrote about it and kind of shaped opinion. Um, and now this is the job. So you have some people that are nominally working in charities and are policy experts, but actually, if they're any good, they're actually journalists. And if you've got, you've got journalists working in papers, and if they're any good, they're actually policy experts. And the two roles are, are at the moment, almost indistinguishable, actually. And the roles in five years' time will be indistinguishable. Um, and that has really, really important implications for how anyone that relies on kind of policy expertise um, thinks about um, uh, the, the kind of functionality that they need in the digital services that are supporting them. And this is basically the functionality you need. Um, so you need something that is kind of slow web, that is for your downloads, your projects, your serious kind of pieces of long, turgid thing that no one will read. Um, you, you need something that is a, a kind of faster um, more integrated kind of blogging type function that gives you kind of quite pointed takes on hot issues, references your other staff, but is shareable in a kind of social media way. You need a, a Twitter, Facebook um, functionality that both shares out your kind of your feeds um, and the content you're doing and also helps you gather people that share and spread that message around. And then you need some sort of Tumblr-esque stuff that is just a bit more fun um, and kind of engages people and gets them to come in. Um, and uh, there isn't one organization in this country that's got that right yet. Um, the Center for American Progress in the US has got it right. Um, and they're the only, and there's a, uh, there are a couple of the screenshots from there, I think, Progress. Um, I'm, I was actually going to finish in about three minutes, if that's okay. So I'm going to be two minutes under. Um, and the Center for American Progress is the only place that has actually really got this right. Um, and the importance of, um, of this functionality is partly that it enables you to engage in debates in a better way and be more influential. And partly, it helps everyone in your organization make the shift from this to this. Because there's lots of, um, of um, the sort of policy research and influence field is sort of going through what the miners did in the 1980s, which is they have it has fundamentally realized that the model of production that has been going on in policy research for kind of 10 years is basically dead. Because you've got transparent data, you've got research that is much more open, you've got much quicker takes on things, and journalists, um, where you used to have a kind of, um, there used to be quite a lot of barriers to entry to being an expert on a particular issue. You can now be an expert on a particular issue in about four minutes if you really have to blag something. And about a day, um, in about a day, you can fake it being an expert in almost any policy area in front of really pretty high level audience. Um, that's probably not the quote that I really want out there. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I think you probably can though. Um, and then the, the very final thing I want to talk about is how fast you can get out of the blocks. Um, so, um, six months ago, um, we had no social media strategy at all, really. And we've we got someone completely brilliant called Nick Stanton, who you can follow on Twitter. He does the Systems of Ice feed, and he's also got a personal one, um, who said, this is just silly. Why don't we try and do something? Um, and he's on the Citizens of Ice blog. He's just done this week a kind of what did we do and what did we try and get out of it. Um, and I just wanted to share two things from it. It was basic. The basic premise was... Um, can we engage people a bit better with social media through kind of giving them things to do and, and making them part of what we do? And the two sort of... What I love about the social media stuff is you can really measure it really well. Um, the, the, the two things um, that I'd highlight from six months ago to now um, are the amount of time it now takes Citizens Advice to um, get 1,000 new followers on Twitter has really, really gone uh, sort of uh, reduced. Um, we've got more than 300 active accounts across the organization that are all kind of loosely federated and doing their own thing in a coordinated way. Um, and the sentiment on Twitter of how people are talking about citizens' advice um, from this has gone, that's the sort of bottom chart, has gone from a kind of pretty mixed picture to really quite consistently different, uh, much more consistently positive and much less consistently negative. Um, and we've also managed to recruit kind of 800 social campaigners and 1,000 actions um, of them doing it um, 
And, and what's been really exciting for me about this is um, this has been one good person in Citizens Advice who's got, grabbed this kind of whole area by the scruff of their neck, scruff of its neck, and, um, and just gone, I want to do something with this, and has been sort of allowed to get on with it and just do it. And sort of four months in, really, from actually doing anything, the trajectory of change on this is enormous. And, and I think if you look at um, UNICEF, is the other organization, where two years ago their social media strategy was completely abysmal, and now they're probably the best organization in the world at, at social media. And, and I think the sort of inspiring and optimistic thing about that is you can change your organization's capacity in this space particularly really quickly. Um, that's basically what I wanted to say. Um, uh, if you uh, did like Citizens Advice before, I hope you still do. If you didn't, I hope you feel a little bit warmer about us. Um, thanks.